Welcome to the CE Pro Podcast. I'm Executive Editor Arlen Schweiger. The changing market landscape caused by the coronavirus is affecting the custom electronics industry from top to bottom. Surge in demand isn't just for TVs and home networks, but even for products like cell phone signal boosters. This week, Editor Jason Knott chats with Frankie Smith, VP of Sales for SureCall, about how COVID-19 has meant record-setting sales in this category. Plus, they have a broader discussion about where residential and commercial markets are heading. Smith also details how dealers can successfully demo connectivity solutions, even when they can't meet face-to-face with clients. Lastly, he offers an update on 5G developments and even does his best to emulate Dr. Anthony Fauci and address the wild internet rumors that COVID-19 was caused by 5G. You'll really want to hear this. Hi, Jason Knott with CE Pro, and we're here today talking with Frankie Smith, Vice President of Sales at SureCall, about the changing market dynamics. Hi, Frankie. Hey, Jason. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for joining me. You know, I kind of teed everybody up there with changing market dynamics, and boy, is this market in flux. We've never seen anything like this happen before with, uh, obviously, the effects of COVID-19, and it's really um, changed all sorts of different things, whether it be the supply chain, uh, the way sales are taking place, uh, some of the labor profitability and the, the labor issues, recurring revenue. There's lots of things on the table right now that integrators are having to deal with. And, and I'm glad you're going to join me today to talk a little bit about it and hopefully get some ideas out there for integrators. Yeah, absolutely. It's been a, uh, these last, what, since uh, April during the COVID time period has just really been a crazy time of transition and just fluctuation of the in the market right especially for the drastic differences between the commercial installation uh, and residential installation market whereas yeah, what's, when the, the, what's the state yeah. of that right now give us a state of, the, of those two markets sure so when it first started it was you know everything was going along okay and then the pandemic started and um you know people were afraid to have um workers inside their home or installers inside their home due to just the kind of the fear out there. So that market slowed down. The commercial market kept going for a moment because at that time, nobody really knew how long this was going to go. And it was almost seen as an opportunity as the people shifted to working from home, the buildings were empty. So it was a great time for installers to get in there and do their work and not disrupt the business flow. Uh, So that's kind of how it was in the beginning. But then over time, as it moved to more of a permanent or long term um, situation of working from home, businesses started you know, reallocating their funds saying, well, we don't really need uh, better cellular connectivity uh, inside of our building if our workers are going to be from home. Um, and due to do all the safety precautions that a lot of installers have been taking now, I think more people have been comfortable on the residential side to allow install installation folks inside their home to, to do their work, to outfit their home office, to make sure they can make reliable uh, cellular phone calls and make sure they can stay connected. So that's kind of that shift to where residential is really booming now and can the commercial uh, installation market as, as we can see and what I've heard, it still continues to be on the, on the downward slide. So talk a little bit about that residential uh, market. Obviously, you know, you and I are probably in the same situation where we all of a sudden found ourselves working from home on a very consistent basis. Um, we looked at our network connectivity. We looked at our cell phone. I have a portion of my house above our garage where we just don't do not get sprint signals so um what did you what did you see in terms of integrators having to go in and what is what is entailed in a typical residential installation for a cell phone signal booster upgrade sure well i think uh, uh we've seen a significant boom and increase since everything started here the last few months and i think it went from when people started working from home having cellular connectivity went from a nice to have to a must have um, I won't say we're as popular as a toilet paper or hand sanitizer, but demand has just really shot through the roof. Um, and so the typical installation is uh, making sure that there's enough cell phone signal outside of the home to bring in. And in 99% of the cases there is. And, you know, there's an antenna that would go outside. You run the coax cable inside to the amplifier itself, the booster. And with some antennas inside, it boosts the signal inside the home for all carriers. So now if you're on AT&T, Sprint, Verizon, T-Mobile, you're able to make reliable phone calls and have those business calls, uh, as well as, of course, text messaging and any data streaming you want to do over LTE. One of the things that's amazed me about what's happening in the market, 
and I'm sure a lot of integrators saw it, is that housing is just on fire. The, the new home construction permit numbers are way up. The home sale, new home sales are up. And uh, I think I, the NHB's housing index had a 13 year all time high for optimism uh, in July. So what should integrators be doing to talk to builders as well as their past clients who might be working from home right now? Yeah, no, that, that's a good question and a good point. I think uh, during this time when we have limited, um, limited activities that we can do now, do sporting events are, you can't have fans and we're not traveling as much. We have a lot more, discretionary income, so to speak. And we're doing things like buying new homes, remodeling our homes, things like that, putting money back into where we can spend money uh, and invest. Uh, so installers should certainly be out there talking to their past customers, um, making sure that they're aware of all the different solutions that they have and knowing that most people are working from home. So kind of tailoring their speak to uh, what they can do to enhance that person's home office experience. Um, along with all the other things that they offer and the professional service that they provide. But that's just, that's the hot button right now. And that's the thing that most people are interested in. And we see that continuing for the next uh, foreseeable future. To your point about that money shift, I saw the other day where the NFL, at least up here in New England, the Patriots aren't going to have fans in the seats. And so they're giving a lot of those season ticket holders their money back. So these are, target clients for integrators who now just got an influx of thousands of dollars back in their pockets that they were they had already allocated and um you know it's a perfect perfect example of where money could be coming back into that homeowner that could be spent on a home upgrade right yeah exactly so and i think you know we hear a lot about the uh, the jobless claims and the unemployment and everything that's going on out there and you know, fortunately, unfortunately, we hate hearing that, that that's happening. But for the most part, from what I've seen, custom integrators right now are busier than ever, ever in residential. I don't think that the demographic that the unemployment has really hit has affected the demographic of who our customers are or custom installers um, customers are. Right. So it's been a they're busier than ever. And it's just a, it's a good time to be out there and pursuing new business because people have the funds to spend to your point. Yeah, I would agree with that, that, that conclusion. It is an unfortunate circumstance. It's almost like a, a bigger gap is being created between the, the haves and the have nots, but those haves are the ones that the integrators are targeting. And, and for the most part, they aren't hotel workers and restaurant workers and people who really do need those paychecks right now. Let's talk about the um, supply chain. You know, you mentioned what happened in end of March and April, and we heard about so many manufacturers who ramped down their production. And then when things really started to ramp back up, they kind of um, got caught with their pants down a little bit where there were some supply chain shortages. Tell us what it's been like with SureCall situation. Yeah, no, that's a good question. And, and we had our challenges in the spring. As, you know, as head of sales, I'm very involved and lead our forecasting effort. And it's exceeded our wildest dreams here in the past several months, breaking sales records and, and whatnot. And very rarely do you ever forecast for um, breaking sales records in consecutive months is that what we did. So it was a bit of a challenge earlier, earlier in, the, in the spring and summer, um, but we've done a really good job. Our sourcing team has done a great job at um, finding components for our parts from all over the world, from the best quality uh, component manufacturers. Uh, and some of these things have 16 to 36 week lead time. So, you know, just because something happens in May, you pull the trigger. It's not like you're always going to have the product in June. It can take till September or beyond to have that product because the entire world supply chain was affected uh, during the pandemic. So it all kind of rolls downhill. If you don't have the tiny components that go into your product, it just slows everything down. But now that uh, everything's getting caught back up, I mean, the, it's, it's, we're getting in a much better situation. Uh, our partners like Snap AV have been great. They're fully stocked on all our products, have everything that uh, an installer would need to uh, get out there and uh, promote, the, promote SureCall. So it's been a, it's been a, a valiant effort, but uh, you know, we're, we're meeting the demand. We're getting up to meeting the demand and making sure that we have enough uh, product in the pipeline to fulfill it. Let's talk about a particular challenge that integrators are probably facing in terms of how they sell and demo a cell phone signal booster right now. Um, 
can you run through us? I, I think it's particularly compelling that in-person demo for a cell phone signal booster is like a home run. You know, it's so it's such a great way to show the customer the need. Go run us through that and then kind of shift and say, okay, now if you can't go to a customer's home, what should you be doing? Sure. No, that's a great point. And, and seeing is believing, uh, especially with our with our product. And then when they're on site doing a quick and quick and dirty demos that we like to say, you know, no, it's just a soft install. And, you know, you set up this system, it takes, you know, 10, 15 minutes and you turn it on and then you can show the customer the increase in signal on their phones. Now they can make phone calls and it's like a big aha moment. It's a great in-person experience. Now, remotely, it's a little bit more challenging. Now, obviously, we have th tools like Zoom now, and you can do those uh, demos remotely. So that's something that they should be offering their customers. We have, uh, obviously, we have some collateral that we can also help share with them that shows walking through the product and what, it, what, it sh what you should see. Uh, if they have a showroom, sh video, show the product on the wall, show the antenna how it is mounted on the roof, right? Turn it on, turn it off, show them the change in the decibels on, their, on the measurement of the signal on your phone. Right. So doing all those things remotely is a very good idea. Uh, and then obviously ensuring the customer when you do come on site that you're going to be taking all the necessary precautions um, and make sure everybody stays safe. But as you said, it's really seems to be loosening up. People are much more um, uh, OK with having integrators in their home or, or, or tradespeople in general. Now, it seems since the beginning of the pandemic, when everybody was like, no, don't come to my house. But so I think they can go back to probably doing a lot of those in-person demos now for clients. And like you said, it's what, 15 minutes to, to really do that setup and show, do that demo for them? That's right. That's all it would take, 15 minutes or so. And then once they see it, then you can get back to, you know, professionally installing it and making it look real pretty. Let me get your take on another thing that I've heard from integrators out there and in particular how it might affect them installing a cell phone signal booster. But I've heard from integrators who have told me that they didn't anticipate um, from a pricing standpoint, their labor pricing, the time it would take them to prepare their technicians and prepare the job site for COVID. So that meant, you know, wiping down every surface and putting down, you know, tarps and booties and, and masks and changing out, you know, if they're even going to the extreme of hazmat suits, which it doesn't seem like guys are doing that anymore. But, um, i would seen one estimate from one of the manufacturers out there on the audio side that he estimated that um, it could add an hour to every eight hours of time that an integrator is on a job site just preparing and then, you know, mm -hmm. collecting at the end of that process all the PPE stuff. What advice would you give to integrators out there for how they should be looking closely at their labor profitability and their, their labor costs? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a good point. Good question. We have had, I've had had some discussions with integrators on that and this, they should really take into consideration because that can eat into their profitability pretty quickly. Um, you know, anywhere from you know, five to 10% uh, increasing their labor costs, uh, if it can be handled competitively in the market, right? You don't want that to be the reason you lose it, but it is extra time. And if it's 10, if you're adding 10% to your labor, I think that's a, that seems to be, I've heard that a couple times, and that seems to be fair, right, and proper, just because the additional time that people are taking on site. Uh, so I, would, I certainly encourage them to first get an understanding how much time it's taking them and on uh, which jobs, right? Maybe some jobs are have more precautions than others and it takes more time. So I would definitely encourage them to take a look at how much time they are spending before they throw a number at it. Refresh my memory on the, the booster install. Um, the antenna, does the antenna, is an outside uh, installation. So a portion of the install here is really an outdoor and probably less prone to being um, PPE than the booster goes inside the home. So what percent is in, of, the, of that time is the guy inside the home versus outside in a typical install? Sure, probably about 50-50. I mean, you've got, when you're installing the antenna outside, you're also, if it's a directional antenna, you're dialing it into the, the area where it has the strongest signal. And then inside, you already know where the customer wants to have the improved coverage. So that's where you know where you're gonna put the inside antenna. Uh, and then, you know, the cable run from outside to inside. So, you know, 50-50, maybe 60-40 more on the inside portion. 
It's a, it's a good point because the outdoor business has been thriving during this, you know, even in that initial um, situation where everybody was in lockdown, I heard from a lot of integrators who said customers were okay them doing outdoor entertainment systems or outside install. So it's another advantage of the cell phone signal booster in that a portion is outside. And if there is any customers who have reticence about having a customer or an, an, a um, technician in their home, I should say, then, uh, you know, half the install, they're going to be outside the home. So it's, a, it's much safer, so to right. speak. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's talk about another thing. You know, I've heard from some integrators who told me that, thank God they had recurring revenue during this time frame. And everybody knows recurring revenue, whether it's on the security front or, or whatever, helps even out the fluctuations of the business cycle. And in a situation like this, it's just a great cash flow mechanism. What are the recurring revenue elements of cell phone signal boosters for, for sure call? So they, they can certainly be included into a maintenance agreement that an installer already offers and they can be an additive to that. And that installer can decide how much they would want to um, ask for on the monthly basis or how, quarterly, however they do it. So they certainly fit right into it. We also offer um, a remote monitoring system as well that can be integrated into uh, our boosters which will allow the installer to go in and periodically on their choosing, send reports of uptime usage and fluctuations of the signal and the status of it and can send the customer actual reports if they wanna go down that path too, to actually show some in, increase in value of the, what they are paying for for the recurring monthly revenue. So that's a great way to also monetize it and just add that extra value to the customer. And then uh, refresh my memory again, the SureCall boosters are um, carrier agnostic, correct? That's right. They work with all carriers, uh, all you know, voice and data signals. So anything that's where basically whatever's outside your home is going to be brought inside and boosted and every phone's going to be able to see that improved increase in uh, performance. All right, let's talk about another uh, looming issue and that's 5G. You know, we've been hearing about this now for several years and what a change uh, that's going to bring to uh, the industry, to IoT and the number of devices that are gonna be added to uh, the typical home. What's the latest developments for 5G and, and specifically tell us what, what 5G's effects are from the cell phone signal booster standpoint. Mm -hmm. Sure, so 5G, uh, we've seen all the commercials still, right? Every day we're seeing them and all the advertisements that it's coming and it has not slowed down the the rollout of the infrastructure the, the big carriers they're all doing it it's a uh, it's going to be a lengthy process i think the marketing and advertising is far ahead of the actual application to where it really gets rolled out and use cases and things like that but it is coming and it's going to start in your um, major metros first your most populated density density areas because uh, the signal and the ultra wide bands way up there in the frequency where 5G tends to operate is the, the signal does not go very far. It has a lot of capacity, so you can send a lot of data. You can send, so you hear about the crazy amount of speeds that it can do, but you have to be much closer to that antenna source compared to where our cellular towers are now. So that's why they're starting more in the, in the densely populated areas and then eventually fan out and branch out to suburbia. Um, so the good news is with uh, signal boosters that are being sold today, uh, 4G is not going anywhere, right? So our signal boosters today do LTE, 5G, our, our boosters are compatible with the 5G phones that do LTE, which they will do for years to come. And even some carriers have mentioned uh, 5G dynamic spectrum sharing, which means they'll take the 5G protocol and transmit those signals over the existing bands today in 4G. So the products we have today have a very long shelf life. And, um, and eventually as the use cases and the uh, number of people that have 5G and the indoor signal problems that are gonna come because they just can't penetrate, there will be boosters that meet that demand and ever increasingly because of just the nature of uh, how poorly the signals do penetrate. So now correct me if I'm wrong, I've heard that 5G even has trouble, could have trouble through tinted windows um, and the, that, that, that bandwidth it just has not just walls and brick, we're not talking about concrete walls and brick walls, but mm -hmm. even tinted windows uh, could be obstructive. That's right. Yeah, since it's so high in the spectrum, it just, it doesn't penetrate very well. So we've even heard that the palm of your hand holding your phone uh, could block the signal 
per se, right? So yeah, it's going to have some major issues. And you're, this is where they talk about you're going to have to have an antenna or an access point on every light pole in the city. Uh, so there's just a lot of infrastructure that has to go into it and, and come out for it to really for us to see the, the benefits on a consistent basis. Does that change the way integrators should be designing or deploying cell phone signal boosters in the home? No, not, not for the time being, because right now, if you think about it, in the home, we're still deploying many, many boosters because people can't get the LTE signal, 4G signal in their homes. By the time 5G reaches those areas and um, uses that spectrum, it's going to be quite some time. Um, and again, the, the frequencies we're using today in LTE bands are going to be have a shelf life for you know 10 years to come. So it really shouldn't do anything that's changing, but be, be prepared to answer those questions when the customer does say, I want a 5G booster because I'm seeing everything in the news is 5G. Well, let me educate you, Mr. Customer, on, on why eventually you may need one, but today this is what you'll need for years to come. So you have to answer the big question uh, that, you know, that, that rumor that was floating out there that 5G was the cause of COVID. Um, hmm. What, I mean, let's be honest that an integrator might get that question from a customer. How should he respond? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a good question. We heard that. And, you know, I've, I've not ever heard any doctor or any real person that has with the qualifications that I would listen to actually confirm that or uh, even give it any validity. So that's where I would stand with that one is uh, I don't, I don't foresee that, uh, how that could possibly be the case. Yeah, it's just amazing how these things uh, are. And we're, we're going to have Dr. Fauci on right after this just to <laughs> confirm what you said. <laughs> just, just don't let him pitch. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, terrible. Yeah. Uh, all right, uh, Frankie Smith, Vice President of Sales at SureCall. Thanks for joining CE Pro today. Thanks, Jason. Anytime. <laughs>